And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now the NFL training camp is officially underway. The Lions are five to six days into training camp at this point. And with that being the case, obviously there are going to be some standout players. There's going to be standout rookies. There's going to be standout veterans. There's going to be new players that are making plays. And there's going to be those old reliable players that have been here for a while that continue to shine. And today we are going to talk about those players. Today we are going to talk about the risers and the fallers from the early stages of a Detroit Lions training camp, whether that player is having a phenomenal camp or failing to meet expectations going into the 2022 season. We have multiple players from both categories, and today we're going to talk about all of it. So with all that being said and all that out of the way, let's get straight on into taking a look at the Detroit Lions training camp biggest risers and biggest fallers. Now starting off with arguably the best player at Detroit Lions training camp over the first week, Aiden Hutchinson has been just a sheer dominant force wearing the Honolulu blue. On his first practice, he went against Penny Sewell in a one-on-one, -on -one, hit him with a spin move on an inside, hit him with an inside swim move and put Penny Sewell on the ground and was and although we obviously didn't hit the quarterback, it would have been an, a very easy sack for Aiden Hutchinson had he actually been able to tackle the quarterback. Just a few reps later, he was able to put a really, really good spin move on Jonah Jackson to get past him for another would-be sack. And just overall, he was giving the offensive line all they could handle all day long in his first day of NFL training camp. And he hasn't slowed down since. He may be not be breaking the new he may not be breaking news like he was on the first day, right? It seemed like the first day of training camp every other tweet every other post by the Detroit Lions was Aiden Hutchinson beats Penny Sewell Aiden Hutchinson beats Jonah Jackson Aiden Hutchinson does this and that hasn't necessarily been consistent throughout all of camp but Aiden Hutchinson has been very consistent he's been getting better every single day by the accounts of both players teammates and coaches and he is just somebody that continues to dominate somebody that continues to show why he was the number two overall draft pick in the NFL and I'm not going to jinx it early. I don't want to say that he's the best player from this class. But as of right now, as of today, he is, in my opinion, the most impressive player from the 2022 class in training camp in preseason so far. Just the sheer dominance early on a rookie. Just the sheer dominance from a rookie early isn't very common in the NFL. And for a rookie to dominate versus a top five offensive line like the Lions have, I think speaks even more volumes about how good Aiden Hutchinson actually is going to be. Now, the second player that I want to talk about is DeAndre Swift. Now, DeAndre Swift has been very heavily praised by the media for the past couple of months. He's did a lot of work in the offseason to bulk up, did a lot of work in the offseason to build some of that muscle, to build some of that endurance so that he could fight through minor injuries, so that he could stay on the field more, so that he could be more of a bell cow, get more touches in this Detroit Lions offense. And going into training camp, you know, we didn't really see DeAndre Swift do a whole lot in mini camp. We didn't really see DeAndre Swift do a whole lot in you know OTAs because it's just you know it's just the nature of it right you show up you stretch you run you know you do some conditioning you catch some passes but it's not like a hundred percent full speed you know grab and go or 11 on 11s all the time so we didn't really get a huge opportunity to see DeAndre Swift in full action but in the early stages of training camp, DeAndre Swift has looked phenomenal. Even though he added probably 10 to 15 pounds, he hasn't lost even a step of the explosiveness that he had a season ago. And we know how explosive DeAndre Swift can be. He had multiple big runs versus the Niners and the Rams 
and he had a huge run versus the Browns and had a big run versus the Steelers. I mean, he is genuinely a very good threat on both the ground and through the air, and he bulked up this season. He got a little bit better, got a little bit stronger, got a little bit more durable, and DeAndre Swift, for as big as he got, hasn't lost a step of that explosiveness, and if anything, got even quicker this offseason with his feet. So he is somebody to keep a huge eye on. I think he will be very, very big in the Lions offense in 2022 as multiple receiving touchdowns in competitive team drills and just overall has been a very impressive weapon for the Lions offense. Now moving on to Will Harris. Will Harris, if Aiden Hutchinson isn't the highlight of training camp, Will Harris is. Will Harris officially made a move to cornerback this season. He's not going to be playing the safety role. He's not going to be a hybrid corner safety. He is a full-time cornerback, and he is a darn good one, according to coaches. He has been practicing and taking reps from Jeff Okuda with the number one defense multiple times throughout the first week of training camp. And although him and Okuda continue to split time, right, sometimes Will Harris moves down to the box, sometimes Will Harris moves to slot cornerback or nickel defender, there are a lot of times where Will Harris is taking boundary cornerback one spots and boundary cornerback one reps from the former number three overall pick. A lot of coaches and a lot of media say that the cornerback position fits Will Harris a lot better, being able to be a lot more physical, you know, being able to make contact very early in routes, and just his aggressiveness overall makes him a far better cornerback than it does a safety, according to many coaches. So Will Harris has, I mean, just simply been a very good player. He's been winning a lot of one-on-one -on -one reps. He has had multiple passes defended, has very nearly came away with multiple interceptions, in the early days of training camp. And like I said, he is taking multiple reps away from the projected number one cornerback in Jeff Okuda. Now, with that being said, Jeff Okuda is by no means having a bad camp, and Jeff Okuda is also one of the risers. He is somebody that, as you, as a lot of you very well know, is coming back from that Achilles injury. He's coming back from a huge season-ending injury, but Jeff Okuda doesn't look like he just tore his Achilles. He looks fast. He looks explosive. He's driving on routes. His anticipation is, I think, what a lot of people say is his biggest improvement this year, right? Reading routes, reading coverages, kind of reading the quarterback and the wide receiver at, at, at the same time and breaking on routes seems to be where Jeff Okuda really, really worked this offseason and really worked when he wasn't able to be on the field. His understanding of routes, his understanding of you know timing and stuff like that continues to impress coaches. He has jumped multiple routes for interceptions as well as passes defended, and he just overall is playing very well in a way you would expect Jeff Okuda to be playing in his return to the Detroit Lions. He is somebody that has very obviously put a lot of work into the film, has very obviously put a lot of work into studying and trying to figure out how to become a better cornerback in the NFL. And so far, even though Jeff Okuda isn't taking every single rep at cornerback one, it does seem like Jeff Okuda is slated to start at the boundary cornerback position, and he seems to be ready and primed for a very, very good season. Now, getting onto some of the fallers, these are players that, you know, maybe aren't living up to expectations, maybe aren't necessarily, you know, playing the best football that they could be, or, you know, just have maybe suffered an injury, which is calling them, to, which is causing them to fall down the depth chart. And that is the case for Devin Funches. Devin Funches made it about one and a half practices before going off the field and missing some time with injuries. And as we talked about yesterday, with the additions of Derek Deese, with the additions of James Mitchell, and of course, Shane Zalsky coming back with the competition you already have with TJ Hawkinson as well as Brock Wright. The tight end competition is a very tough one and missing time or missing anything with injury is going to severely hurt your chances of making this roster and Devin Funches did suffer an injury very early, hasn't really been seen a whole lot during camp and is at very big risk of losing a starting spot if not losing a roster spot to some of these younger players that have actually been on the field making plays for the Detroit Lions. 
Now, Jamar Jefferson, the seventh round pick from a year ago, is also not quite playing as well as a lot of people thought. I am one of those supporters that thought Jamar Jefferson could have been a very good running back this year, could have been an easy RB3, and could have been a backup to somebody like Jam to Jamal Williams if he were to get injured. However, it does seem like he is a very clear running back for at best, as Craig Reynolds has continued to keep a very tight grip on that RB3 spot. He is just, you know, not quite making the big plays, not quite making the big runs, not quite having the contact balance that Craig Reynolds has had, and really didn't make as many big plays last year as Craig Reynolds did for the Detroit Lions. So Jamar Jefferson, I'd say, is slightly not living up to those expectations, but overall, a lot of the Lions players are. Mm. Right, overall, a lot of Lions players are playing very, very well. A lot of Lions players are showing that they deserve either starting spots or roster spots, and there's a ton of competition going throughout training camp already in just a few days. But with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments below what players are you most excited to see for the Lions? What players do you think are having the best offseason? What players are you most excited to see hit the field in 2022 for the Lions? Be very curious what you guys think, but with all of that being said, that is life for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching, and until next time, and as always, go Lions!